Hi guys, my name is Kelvin White and welcome to Ultimate Tropicals. So for many years I've had this dream of having an indoor full-on tropical rainforest and now that dream is about to be realised as I build a completely bespoke and giant paludarium. Now for those of you that watch my videos on Ultimate Tropicals on a regular basis you'll notice that the surroundings are very very different today and that's because I'm recording this in my home office and not actually in the business unit where we have the online shop and of course the indoor greenhouse. Okay so this is the view that I have from my seating position at the desk and as you can see at the moment I have an IKEA display unit where of course the tropical plants are displayed and my intention is for the paludarium is to be pretty much identical dimensions as this display unit with the exception of maybe just a little bit higher it's going to be sitting on top of a cabinet and that cabinet will just be about the same level as the edge of my desk so of course I don't really see that part and then the rest of the structure is going to be all glass the fact that it's going to be a bespoke build this is going to be one hell of a chunk of glass and apart from hours and hours of research I've also had to have uh, many discussions with the glass company about what can be done and what can't. So basically it's going to go from about the height you see right here and it's going to be just below ceiling height to make the maximum use of it and of course it's going to be completely enclosed. The bottom section for 20 centimeters uh, will be full of water uh, because my idea is to build like a tropical rainforest with a riverside feature as well. So the bottom 20 centimetres, as I say, will probably contain something like tetras uh, for the Amazonian fish and being able to show uh, the aquatic side of the tropical rainforest. And then above that, my intention is to have a full length waterfall right from the very top right the way down. It's going to have a false bottom, so I will be able to build the land side of it separate from the aquatic side. Uh, that's where the plants are going to go. It's also going to be fitted with a Mist King uh, rain system in order that can be automated rainfall maybe a couple of times a day. You, you know, that's something I'm going to have to, to work out where the plants will get a regular misting. But of course all the moisture will filter down through the substrate and into the water course at the bottom. Because the paludarium is going to be set up in a bioactive manner it will contain various critters, uh, springtails, isopods uh, to break down the substrate and leaf matter and of course all of this will be filtered through to the water course and then it will be re recycled as rain. Now I appreciate this is going to take a little while to not only to set this up and to build it out but it's also going to take a time to get the, the bioactive side of things working correctly and there will be you know a fair degree of trial and error. I'm certainly no expert when it comes to building these and it will be the first time I've ever built a paludarium. I've had aquarium fish over the years, I've kept tropicals, I've kept marines, kept just about everything uh, but I've never really attempted to build anything quite like this. Uh, my intention also as well as filling this with rare exotic plants is that I will probably have some poison dart frogs in there uh, and bring it to life. So as you can see it's a mammoth and probably ambitious project. Uh, the pricing of the glass is nearly 500 quid on its own without all the other hardware that needs to make this work. But what I'll do on this video, I'll keep you updated, there will be mistakes along the way, I'm absolutely sure of that. But I'll take you through the progress. I know a lot of you in our Ultimate Tropicals group do keep paludariums and of course some of you keep rare exotics inside of IKEA cabinets and various other means as well so hopefully it will be of some interest to you and you'll be able to follow along and see how the build progresses but of course the idea of all this is that my love of rare tropical plants will be able to be housed now inside of this paludarium and it will have the humidity it will have, it will have simulated rainfall and, and I'm really excited about the project and it, it, if it comes off it should be um, a really good showpiece. Okay guys, so um, you know the next step for me now is to dismantle this IKEA display unit. The plants will go out to the greenhouse uh, for the next week or so uh, to keep them nice and warm and humid. 
as I switch off the fans and humidifiers. Um, then I dismantle the display unit. All the electrics have to be dismantled. Uh, the electrics at the moment, if I pan up here, you'll see I have three Sansi grow lights. And my intention is to keep these for the tank, but of course I need to dismantle them and move them further to the back of the room so they're directly above the tank. So that's what needs to happen uh, first. Once I've got the um, bottom cabinet built, by that time hopefully the glass uh, will be ready and then I can go about uh, building the glass cabinet. And once that's done then of course I'm able to start adding in the various technology and hardware that's going to be needed to make the tank function for adding all the substrates and plants and, and everything else. So that's basically an overview of what I plan to happen and I will record what happens uh, as I go along. Hi guys, so let's fast forward for three weeks. Um, the IKEA uh, display unit has now been dismantled and packed away. The new um, base unit is in place and, uh, and the glass has finally arrived. So today we can actually commence with assembling the glass structure. So I've used some foam matting uh, to go underneath the tank just to give it a little bit more cushioning. So then of course the next job is to actually go round and seal. Now Andy's um, kindly been plucked out of furlough to come along and, and give me a lift here. I mean this as you can imagine is one hell of a sheet of glass. Uh, extremely heavy and we're a bit nervous that um, of course we may uh, end up breaking it. The first task of course was to get the, the back plate into place and then to seal that off. Then we're sealing up for the side panels uh, to go in and hopefully that's going to give it a little bit of um, structure then and help hold it together while it all sort of cures. Uh, the reason that we have black vinyl on the side panel there is because um, my main glass office divider which divides the two sides of the office here um, is quite a tight fit and I'm just not going to be able to get access to it um, once it's in place. So that's the reason that I've put that on there uh, before we assemble it. Uh, the one on the right side I can apply after the tank is finished uh, because of course it, it will be easy access. As, of course it's at this stage now that you're really hoping that the, uh, the measurements for the glass were actually um, accurate because of course it's a bit late now for it to not fit together if that's not the case. So just lining up that last side piece there and then going to use a bit of um, duct tape just to hold it all in place uh, while it sets. Now moving on to the front panel of the paludarium. Uh, this front section is only actually 20 centimeters high and this is the part that's actually going to hold the water. Uh, next comes the job of just going back over the whole structure and laying down an extra layer of sealant uh, just to make sure again that it's um, certainly watertight in the bottom uh, water compartment but also just adding uh, some extra sealant to all the joints uh, because of course of the humidity um, we want to really make sure it's got a really tight seal on it. Okay so I'll give it a couple of days now to just harden off make sure it's nice and secure and then come back and put the strips in um, the door runners and the side pieces that go with that and then uh, fingers crossed that the sliding doors uh, will actually fit in the space that's left. Once all that's completed then the next step will be putting in the technology for the for the waterfalls and the misters uh, and all the sort of mechanics that will make the site function. Okay guys, so catch you in part two. Bye for now.